From early dawn to dusk, the hard-working daughters of India's soil must labor with their hands and the most primitive of tools. The stone bowl holding the rice which Rajama is pounding was hewn by hand. Practically all work is done on the floor, such as grinding tapioca, winnowing grain, and flaking coconut on a coconut cutter. Rajama squats down to work, for the Indian kitchen has no table. Water is drawn from a nearby well and must be carried to the house for use in preparing the dinner and later in washing the dishes. The stove is usually two or three places where pots may be set, with a separate fire built under each of them. There is no chimney. The smoke drifts up and out at its own convenience. Rajama, born in a Hindu family and brought up by Hindu parents, is sixth in a family of eight brothers and three sisters. She did not have the opportunity for an education, for a witchcraft man told her parents at birth she would be no use to them and a curse to their religion. Praying before a mud idol while at family worship with her father, she is one of a vast multitude who worship many false gods. India, with its 357 million people, most of them Hindus and Muslims, with comparatively few Christians, presents a real challenge to the rest of the Christian world. As Rajima returns home from the fields one day, she finds waiting for her a man who is a complete stranger to her. This man, a Church of God believer, has received a divine message to bring to Rajima a Tamil New Testament. He advises her to take this book and read it carefully. As he places the book in her hesitant hands, he extends to her an invitation to learn more about Jesus and salvation. the meaning of this gift? What meaning have these words for her? Who is this Jesus? But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. evangelist is good, for the seed has been planted in fertile ground. But the book must be kept from her father's eyes. He is feared by his family, and great would be his anger indeed if he knew of his daughter's infidelity. is not easy, since there are those who would deter Rajama. Her parents and her brothers have begun to persecute her. She must retreat to a far-off hill to read her testament, making sure her father is not in sight. But the seed has come forth and blossomed, and the quest for truth has begun. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. One opportunity offered those who wish to learn more of Jesus and salvation is the open-air gospel meeting, where preachers of the word lead the services. Often, if there are two of them, one interprets or repeats what the other is saying, clarifying each teaching for those in the congregation. Christian workers are helping to spread the gospel throughout India ever reaching new fields with the Word of God. Though Rajama's family has hindered her from going to church, she is able to come to this service the first Sunday without their knowledge. 
at the meeting which has already begun. The women are seated apart from the men. Rajima waits hesitantly outside the group until she is invited to join them. are preaching the glorious gospel of the Son of God. The last commission of our Lord Jesus Christ to his disciples was go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He promised to give us the Holy Ghost that through the power of the Spirit we might be able to accomplish the task he has given us. The gospel of the kingdom must be preached to all peoples that each one may believe and bear witness to his own faith. Father awaits at home, angrily, impatiently. Rajima, where have you been? Why did you not ask permission? As she replies that she was afraid, his rage increases and explodes in a burst of cruel violence. Family worship is led by the father. Many idols share in deification by the Hindus, a chief god being the king serpent. Preparations on the altar are placed on mats of banana leaves and set before the god's pictures. Flowers are tossed to the god with a snake spiraled around her. This ritual no longer interests Rajima. But her brothers are yet fascinated by the power of the serpent. Hindu worship is thus carried on twice daily, just before sunrise and just before sunset. Three weeks later, Rajima dares again to go to church. As she passes a coffee shop, she is unaware that her father and two friends are drinking inside. But she is discovered and watched with derision. the gospel meeting, her father is further angered by the taunting of his cronies. Rajima hears again the words of salvation from the first chapter of John. But as many as received him, to them gave he power. But another note is sounded as well. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. repeated by a member of the congregation as she urges Rajima to accept Christ as Savior. Her decision is made and she heeds the invitation to come forward. And Jesus said, Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me unto the uttermost part of the earth. Watching and waiting, pacing with a burning anger, her father is determined to punish her.
Rajama's father, at wit's end as to what to do with Rajama and her Christianity, calls in a witch doctor to perform a ceremony that is supposed to bring her back to Hinduism or kill her. After lighting the tapers, the priest, or Mandaravati, purifies the offerings brought at the market by sprinkling water on them. A curse must come upon her. Music is designed to please the gods. so that their beauty may please as well. Among the major gods revered by the family are the elephant god, Ganapati, the monkey god, Hanuman, and Satyanarayan. Rajama seeks the strength of the Spirit of God. Fish-like swimming motions are made to please the fish gods, while coconuts are offered as food. priest is ready to begin the special witchcraft designed to affect Rajama's mind and return her from Christianity to Hinduism. Written on the tin with a stylus is a special language known only to the Mandaravati. Included are the name and other personal particulars about Rajama. the tin are a strand of Rajama's hair, a piece of her sari, and a piece of fingernail and toenail. These must be dedicated and burned in token sacrifice. doll is finally prepared for the fire. According to Hindu belief, the curse that is being created may turn back upon the witch doctor himself or upon one of his family. And so it has happened, for word arrives suddenly that the witch doctor's son has been bitten by a poisonous snake. As the Mandaravati leaves the house with the messenger, Rajama's father admits defeat once again. Later, he tries to solve the problem of his rebellious daughter 
by arranging a marriage between her and a substantial Hindu merchant. Surely Rajama will be sensible and accept the security of a husband and home and forget her foolish notions about becoming a Christian. Her father has already failed three times to win her back. Since neither punishment nor threats nor curses have weakened her resolve, he tries flattery and an appeal to her desire for comfort and well-being. He does not know that these desires are dead. He warns her that her stubbornness will no longer be tolerated. Rajma's father finds it difficult to control his rising anger, and he assures his friend that he will find a way to bring her around. If she refuses to change her mind, he will disown her and turn her out of his home. A man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. This is the sword that Christ has brought into the life of Rajama, the sword that divides those who accept Jesus Christ as their savior and those who sell their souls to the devil. Rajama's father does not have the confidence he displays to his friend. He assures him that if he will only have patience, the ungrateful girl will come to her senses. are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. For as the rain cometh down and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. Rajama finds friendship and Christian love in the home of the pastor. It is here that she learns of the opportunities for Indian Christian boys and girls to study toward full-time service for the Lord. The Bible school at Mulakra was founded by the Church of God to train those who have been called of God for labor in the great harvest field of the Lord. It was an Indian Christian, one of her own people, who first opened her heart to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Now it is an Indian pastor who shows her the open door to new understanding. The first leg of Rajama's journey to the Bible school at Mulakra is by water. The many rivers of South India provide one of the basic means of transportation. The canoe and covered ox cart are common sights in the rural areas in this vast and picturesque land. of Rajama's trip is taken in the most modern of conveyances. At the Church of God Bible School, she is challenged by a curriculum of which the center is Christ and the basic textbook, God's Holy Word. In the classes of the Reverend William Pospisil, as in all her classes, 
the blessing of God is invoked upon their study and discussion. Rajama learns that her life, as indeed the life of man, is ordered by a just and righteous God. Under Miss Dora P. Meyer's instruction in geography, her eyes are open to the needs of the world. The burden which Christians have felt for the salvation of Rajama, she now assumes for the salvation of others. In the study of Paul's letters to the early Christian churches under Mr. T. M. Varghese, she becomes acquainted with the first great missionary of Christ's church, in whose footsteps she and her classmates will follow. Mrs. Pospisil teaches the girls of the school how to sew, enriching their lives with the basic skills of homemaking. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. schoolmates go out from the classroom regularly to bring the witness of their faith in their Lord and Savior to the men, women, and children of the area. She grows in grace as she puts to the practical purpose of winning souls her newfound knowledge of God's Word. Oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. One of her most pleasant assignments is Rajma's work with the children. Using the flannel graph picture method of storytelling, she brings to their minds an understanding of the nature of God. She tells them Jesus' story of the younger son who took his portion of goods and left his father's house. The father grieved to see him go. The son traveled to a far country and wasted his substance in riotous living. He was without friends and without food. He knew that at home there was love and security. Would his father forgive him and let him return to be his son once more? Thus the children learn that the heavenly father is forgiving to those who are truly repentant. Sometimes Rajima visits the sick and raises intercessory prayer to the throne of grace, knowing that the divine physician can bring healing to the broken bodies of his children. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. On the campus of the Church of God Bible School at Malakura, a memorable event takes place on the 1st of December, 1954. A new chapel is being consecrated to the ministry of God's Word among the unsaved of South India. Already, the Church of God in India comprises over 4,000 members, with over 100 gospel workers holding meetings regularly throughout the land. Thanks are given to God that many have sowed bountifully that this church might be built. It is the common labor of Indian and American brothers in Christ which makes possible the establishment of Christ's kingdom in the hearts of men. It is the Holy Spirit working in the hearts of dedicated Christians who will bring the continuing leadership which will make the Church of God in India self-sustaining and self-propagating. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name.
first months at the Bible school, Rajima's heart is deeply burdened for the unsaved soul of her father. Meanwhile, in answer to her prayers, the Holy Spirit is touching his heart. In the long nights, he remembers with pain the cruel lash of the whip, the steadfast faithfulness of his daughter despite his unreasoning anger. He recalls that to the command which God laid upon her heart, he could only offer in opposition the empty mockery of pagan ritual. With agonized spirit, he remembers that he once tried to take her very life, that he threw her bodily from his house and forced her from his home. both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. The Reverend William Pospisil, overseer of our work in India, and Pastor T.M. Varghese, field secretary to the Church of God, meet the repentant father and learn of his desire to know the Lord. In the days that follow, the Christian witness of loyal disciples and the ineffable Spirit of God open the heart of him who confesses his sin and lays his burdens at the foot of the cross. For those who walk in the light, even as he is in the light, have fellowship one with another, and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ cleanseth them from all sin. a great body of those who have found fellowship in Christ meet in prayer on the shore of a nearby lake. This is a day of victory, a victory for those who have been baptized and a victory for those who for the first time are about to publicly confess the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior. The story of Rajima and her father is being echoed today in the lives of thousands of Indian men, women, and children as the Church of God in India moves triumphantly forward. with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. But Rajima and her father are only two souls among the millions yet to be reached with the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. This is the task and this is the challenge. To accept this challenge and to shoulder this task is the clear call of the Lord to the Church of God in India. 
The story we have to tell will be heard by the unsaved of India only as we who have been entrusted with the word rededicate ourselves to that purpose. With our lives so dedicated, the commandment of our Lord Jesus Christ to preach the gospel of his redeeming grace to all peoples in all nations shall be fulfilled.